Hello everybody, my name is Jason, and I am here to talk to you about dragons. Now, these dragons are getting a bit of a bad rap because people are rushing into dragon ownership. Now, uh, when you rush into owning a pet of any sort without fully understanding the behaviors and the, the nuances of that pet, it's going to do some weird stuff that you don't quite understand. That does not mean that your pet dragon is so stupid. It means you don't understand it, and it doesn't deserve to die because it does a loving and caring and protecting thing that dragons do, and you don't quite get it. So uh, <laughs> this video is just going to be kind of it's going to start as a mod spotlight where I talk about just the dragons. All the mod spotlights I saw were a little bit out of date. They don't have the three uh, new dragons, so I'm going to go into those and then. Uh, I'm going to talk about Attack of the B-Team specifically and why dragons are doing some kooky kind of stuff in Attack of the B-Team, uh, why they're doing it, and how you can prevent it from uh, interrupting your gameplay when you don't want the dragons to be hanging around. So uh, let's get started with learning all about how to get these dragons. All right, so the first thing you're going to need is a dragon egg. And you can get a dragon egg either off of the podium that spawns when you kill the dragon in the end, or from any chest pretty much anywhere around the world. Any of these witchery areas or a dungeon chest or stronghold chest or temple chest, any of those that would give you some goodies might also have a dragon egg. Now to hatch a dragon egg, you just place it on the ground like so and then you right click it. And it'll move, start getting some particles and you'll see it change from dragon egg to ender dragon. Now an ender dragon is the default dragon type and it will when it hatches it just looks like the dragon in the end if you want one of the other dragons you have to hatch it under certain conditions and these are some of those conditions if you want a water dragon just hatch it around some water pretty easy you want a fire dragon hatch it around some lava or some fire like so if you want a ghost dragon you want to do it either underground or just in a low light location so you just enclose it a bit and close it up wait a few seconds and it will switch to a ghost dragon egg uh, the ghost dragon will not hatch if it's exposed to sunlight so you're gonna wanna uh, keep it enclosed while it's hatching the ice dragon just needs some ice forest dragon needs some leaves and the nether dragon needs some nether rack. And the last dragon is the ether dragon, and it is way up here. You're going to want to come up way in the air. I'm about uh, Y level 170, so anything above that. I tried at 160 and it didn't seem to work, so go way up there. You're going to want like a 5x5x2 five by five by platform. If it's not too thick, I had some trouble with them falling to the ground and crashing and destroying themselves on the ground and they tend to like move around so you want a 5x5 five five so they stay up here and just do it up in the air right click and ether dragon alright so that's how you hatch each of the different kinds of dragons and we are going to come back uh, once they've come closer to hatching Okay, so while those are hatching, let me show you something else that's kind of cool. Let's say we just plopped down an egg and we started hatching it. And we're going to get just an ender dragon because we don't have it in a specific location. And then we go, ah, you know what? I really wanted a fire dragon. Well, you don't have to wait and try and find another egg. All you have to do is as long as this is an egg form, you can just change the surroundings of the egg and it will switch to whatever kind of dragon uh, is is appropriate for those surroundings. So we just switched it to a fire dragon by adding some fire. You can add some lava. Let's say we want a water dragon. We changed our mind. We don't like fire. We want water. So pop some water down there and it switches right to a water dragon. So pretty cool. Now you go, ah, I like the blue, but I'd really like the white. I really want an ice dragon. Well, you can either bring in some ice and some snow and surround it, or you can grab a safari net from your uh, mine factory reloaded and bring it over to an icy biome, plop it down right there, and it will eventually change to an ice dragon, just like so. So, 
as long as you are in egg form, you can switch the dragon to whatever type you want, either forest or nether, any of those. And if you decide you want to go back to the classic black ender dragon, you can just move it over to some endstone, and it will eventually change back to an ender dragon. Now, one thing to keep in mind is while it's pretty easy to switch from fire to water and all that kind of stuff, uh, switching back to fire can be a little uh, difficult because most of the dragon eggs actually take damage from lava and fire. So if you set them on fire uh, or, or dump them in lava, they may uh, explode before they switch, and then you will have to go find another egg. So one little thing to keep in mind, but otherwise you can switch it back and forth between any of the kinds of dragons that you want, as long as it's still in this egg form. All right, so those are probably close to hatching, so let's go check on them. All right, it's not quite ready yet, but when they start to get closer, they start to shake, and you start doing this particle effect. So when you see this, you know you're going to have a baby dragon fairly soon. So we'll be right back once it's actually hatched. All right, so here they are, all hatched and looking cute. Now we've got the ether dragon that we did up in the air, the water, the fire, the ghost, which was underground or enclosed, the ice, the nether, the forest, and the ender dragon. They don't do much of anything in this form. They make a lot of noise and they look really cute. Uh, but we can't do anything with them until they are fully grown, so we're going to wait till they're fully grown. Okay, so the dragons are all grown and looking scary, and here's what they look like. Here is the water dragon, the ender dragon, the forest dragon, over here are the ice, ice dragon, and the ghost dragon, and both of these glow at night. This is really kind of cool. Yeah, they both, their wings glow, the uh, ghost dragon has a little more glow to them, but they look really, really cool at night and then come back over here we have the nether dragon and the fire dragon like so and both of these are immune to fire damage and lava damage so that's something kinda neat and finally we have the ether dragon and he actually flies slightly faster than all the other dragons so if you're looking for some speed that's your guy so let's tame some of these Okay, so here we have a wild ghost dragon, and I want to tame this guy, so let's right-click on him with some fish, and he will follow us as soon as we have raw fish in our hands. We just right-click until we get some hearts. There we go. Now he's ours. So we can control him by having him sit and stand by right-clicking with a bone. If we have him stand, he will follow us, and he will fight whatever we decide to fight and come to our aid when we need him. Uh, if we right click him, again he will sit and he won't follow us anymore, but if we get attacked or attack somebody within his view, he will come to our rescue. So, let's put a saddle on this guy, just right click him with a saddle, and then right click again to pop on. We go up with left shift, we go down with left control, and then we just use W and we can point him in whatever direction we want to go really a cool way to get around. So let's drop down next to this dragon that we have already tamed and I want to pop into survival and show you something kind of cool. So game mode zero and let's turn into a bat and let's fly up into the air. Once we get up to about cloud level we are going to switch back and start falling to our death like so and here we go now both of those dragons try to come to our rescue which is really really cool As soon as they detect us falling they get up and they fly towards us and try to catch us before we hit the ground so let's pop back down and they both tried and as soon as you're safe or you land they will sit back down how they were commanded to so let's let them stand up get close to each other come on over here guys and if you feed them both raw fish they will go into mating mode they will mate just like any other creature 
and produce some offspring. And one of them will pop off, pop out an offspring. And uh, the egg that they produce will be the same type as one of the parents. But it works like every other egg. If we dumped it in water, it would turn to a water dragon egg. If we surrounded it by ice or leaves, it would change accordingly. Uh, there is one thing to note about dragon breeding is that each dragon can only produce or reproduce twice. This is to stop excessive farming, I guess, but that is one restriction on dragon breeding that other mobs do not seem to have. So that's all you can do with the dragons. Uh, they're really a great mod, a cool way to get around. They're really, really strong as a pet. If you have them fight and stuff, they will just tear it up. So. Uh, let's talk about Attack of the B Team and why dragons seem to be getting a bad rap and acting kind of finicky. Alright, so I'm here at my little multiplayer base and over there is Princess Buttercup, my water dragon. And uh, I really like her. She was a very early addition to this base area and so I don't want to get rid of her. But there is that problem where anytime I kind of jump off of anywhere she thinks I'm fallen, which I guess I am, but I'm in no danger, but she thinks I am, so she's going to try and come save me. As soon as I land, she sits right back down, but she will eventually inch her way off of that island into the water and over here, and then i got to go reset her, and it's a massive pain in the butt. Uh, but I didn't really notice it at first, because I spent so much time in bat form here, and... The morph mod and the dragon mount mod work really well together. Anytime I'm in a morph that does not take fall damage, the dragon will completely ignore that I'm falling. Now, if I switch to a morph that does take fall damage, as soon as I start to fall, here she comes. So that's kind of how it's supposed to work and an example of two mods working well together. It would still kind of be a pain in the butt, but not near as big. Because once I got into advanced genetics and I got to fly around as me, I spent a lot more time as me going up and down. And anytime you fly downwards, the dragon thinks you're falling. I'm not falling, but it thinks I am. And then it will try and come to me until it can uh, catch me or I land. So that's a big pain in the butt because I'm always flying around as me. I'm going up and down. And if she keeps coming towards me, it's going to be a huge pain. She's going to catch me at weird spots. We're going to end up stuck inside weird places in places we're not supposed to be able to fit an entire dragon with a person on top of it and and all that so uh that's not gonna work we can't have that happening so there are a couple solutions the first one is to kill your dragon no do not kill your dragon the second one is to always use bat mode when you're around your base or around your dragon and then the dragon will completely ignore you no matter what you're doing or falling or anything like that and that's okay but it still kinda sucks I got into advanced genetics and I want to fly around as me. So I want to fly around as me. The last solution is really very simple. And the key to responsible dragon ownership is to move your dragon over here. You stick a fence post where you want the dragon to sit. You tether it with a lead like so. Now, anytime I'm over here, and I jump off. She'll still try to come save me. But she's not breaking that lead. Same if I'm up here and I decide to drop down. Here she comes. Nope. Can't break the lead. She's going to keep trying until I land. But as soon as I land, she sits right back down exactly where she's supposed to be. So that's how you fix the dragon is so stupid problem. You just tether it down with a lead and all will be fine uh, I haven't had it break a single time I've been doing this for almost a week with her and uh, she's fine she never comes off the island she's always right where she's supposed to be and all is well so go 
take a lead to your dragons. Do not kill them because they're trying to save you. That's a really shitty thing to do. So, until next time, bye.